Minister of uh, Maharashtra, Sri Devendra Fadnavis, in Jasmine 1. So we'll see you there at 6.30. And right now, let's get started with this panel discussion. The moderator is uh, Sagarika Shah, co-founder of Connect Door. And on the panel, we have Ankita Das, CEO, Bullsmart, Saman Sikka, Chief Dreamer and Founder, Squirrel Fintech, a wealth tech uh, platform of Cash Free, Viram Shah, CEO and co-founder of Vested Finance, and uh, Mr. Karan Mehra, founder of Tyke. Over to you, Sagrika. Thank you. Is this audible? Yeah. Awesome. Um, I think welcome to uh, of in-person Zoom session, it feels like. Uh, I'll quickly start without wasting a time. Uh, I think we're running a little late. Um, so I think uh, welcome to all the panelists. Uh, we had a great session, a pre-session discussion about all things wealth tech uh, back in the speaker's lounge. Uh, so Ankit, I'm going to start with you, right? Um, so the topic uh, is gamification of investment. And uh, just to set the grounds right, uh, I think before we move on to the further questions, a very a one common question for all of you is that uh, what in your perspective is gamification when it comes to investing? Because uh, it means quite a lot of different things, right? At, at times it's just confetti is flowing over or uh, at times it's actually changing user behavior to you know do buy or sell something right so from your perspective uh, what do you mean by gamification investing thank you so much sagarika and good afternoon to one and all so for me gamification is 75 percent psychology and 25 percent technology because gamification means you know how you are getting the game inside you know uh, whether it be fintech whether it be you know healthcare or whether it be uh, anything i mean uh, any uh, education or learning everywhere if you see right now everything is gamified so like uh, we have seen many examples of you know uh, the discount brokers which are coming up uh, recently Okay, so the technology is growing, but at the same time, you need to understand the psychology of the, you know, users or psychology of the investors that how they are, you know, thinking about the investment because the background from where I'm coming, I'm from a very middle class background. Okay, uh, when I started back in 2011, when I was doing graduation, from Alliance University, Bangalore. So at that point of time, I was, I was not having any clue. Like what is investment? I was not aware about the words stocks or investment. And uh, yes, so uh, because of you know our internship, we have to do one internship for which we have to go to you know uh, one uh, company, right? So I started with Reliance Capital, and my first investment was uh, rupees 500 SIP. Then I got to know you know, okay, there is something, and uh, it is glorified for me because it was so amazing because you know with 500 I can. Uh, later on, I can get huge returns. But at that point of time when, uh, you know, I was doing my MBA, I was not having that much enough knowledge, though curriculum was there, investment was there a part of curriculum, right? But still, I was not having that knowledge. Why? Because right now, if you see uh, the generation over here in India, like only 3% of us are doing investment, raised doesn't do any kind of investment. Why? Because they lack knowledge. They lack the access. Yes. So I think from your perspective, uh, it's about how you use ga gamification to give access to knowledge uh, to the larger Indians. Yes. Not only mm -hmm. access to knowledge, but we have to make it very much interesting so that because now if I'm very much scared, when it comes to money, everybody gets scared. Right, because mm -hmm. it's about losing money and it's about hard-earned money. So if you know we make it very much interesting to the users or the investors, more people will come up, especially the young generation. Why not start from school? Why not we should start yeah. it from school? Makes sense. Right? Uh, Viram, over to you. Uh, same question, what does gamification mean in your perspective? Yeah, yeah, so... Uh Thanks. So for, for me, I think I've been trying to think of what, how do you break down gamification, right? And, and, and essentially what the word itself means is 
implementing elements of a game right into an investment platform and and so then i was thinking of i, I used to be a very avid gamer so I, i i i was trying to think of okay what kept me hooked on to a game and 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 i could break it down into three things and i think that also impl- imp- uh, sort of is relevant for the investing domain one was every game has a goal right you have uh, a sort of an end goal if you're playing fifa you want to sort of beat your opponent or whatever you have so you have an end goal in mind that is one key part of gamification without a goal it doesn't really work then the other thing that keeps you hooked on to a game is rewards right you want these uh, the goal is typically a very long term goal but you want to keep getting these rewards or variable rewards in the in the in, in between so that you keep playing it so that rewards bit is very important to a game right and and the third thing that i i found was interesting and might not be in all games but competition like right? you want to beat somebody else you want to be better than them and and that's what keeps you playing a game so to me all of these three principles are actually apply to investing as well what is inherently i think already there in investing because it's so real time right stock prices are moving up and down uh, you can buy sell so the goal thing is pretty much already there right it's all real time and uh, and and you have you might have a long term goal you might have a short term goal if you're a trader so goal you don't need to really solve for i mean you can create uis that help there uh, but the rewards and competition bit i think there are interesting things that can be done uh samant uh to you the same question what does gamification mean in your perspective so i'm just going to uh, uh kind of pick up from what uh, uh my colleague here just was mentioning about so i think if you you have while we are discussing this topic i think it's important to understand uh that there are to connect the dots right so we are saying gamification in the context of financial services and for the new age consumer so i think it's very important to connect these three dots and and uh like ram was mentioning that every game has an outcome but then it is a journey right uh, akin to levels right and uh and then of course the most important thing in in a in a game format is what is actually the player he is the hero in that plot uh, and the other most important thing is that there is no defined path uh, so the player itself charts out a certain route and depending upon their skill sets uh, kind of achieves the outcome and i think when you bring all of these things to the financial services uh we are any which way is one of the most complex and jargonized uh ecosystems i often say that the list of things we cannot do is longer than the list of things we can do uh, overlay the the compliance uh, uh aspects of it we talk a different language uh, a common consumer today does not understand the language that we speak and therefore uh the principles of gamification become all the more important for somebody like financial services or fintech so to say and i think uh th- that to me is where the magic is going to happen how do you simplify uh the adoption how do you play the journey it is no longer about selling a product uh the other very important thing about financial services is unlike let's say you ordered something on zomato or you ordered something on amazon you completed the payment you got the delivery of the product that is the end of the relationship as far as that transaction is concerned but on the contrary in financial services after the payment has been made it is actually the start of a journey which could be very long now if somebody is saving for a goal or is saving for taxes it could be for years put together and i think it is therefore very important uh to draw on those gamification principles that how do we therefore continue to engage with the users and partake in the final outcome how do we ensure that it is not about starting a sip or buying a particular investment or buying a stock how do we ensure that the outcome is in, is actually in, achieved and that to me is is the real crux of gamification if you put all these three dots together of financial services and the the new age consumer that we have and the principles of uh, gaming itself thanks amant karan over to you thanks agrika and i think all of them have given a br- uh, brilliant answer i'm karan i'm the co-founder of tyk uh, we built a bank for startups one of the services that we provide uh, is called tyk invest where companies can raise capital from their users starting as low as 5000 rupees uh, so i represent the alternate investing angle of this panel uh for me gamification uh, is the ability uh to 
get users to your happy flow faster and to get users to think that they have won while you have won as well. Uh, so it's a win-win situation to nudge and guide your user to invest in a certain manner or to do a certain action uh, while creating a sense of reward and creating a sense of doing it again. Uh, personally, I think gamification of investing uh, does have certain boundaries which we will mention about later, but it definitely is the is the only way or it's the only habit forming structure in which repetitive investments or repetitive actions can happen. So for me, uh, summarizing what I said, gamification is the ability uh, to make the consumer win while you're winning as well. Interesting. Um, Ankita, to, again to you. So I think, uh, like you building up on what you spoke about awareness, right? So um, in India, if we have observed over a period of time, uh, investing, especially when it comes to trading uh, from a trading perspective or equity asset classes, uh, has been... Um, you know, handled by a small minority of very wealthy people, right? Uh, and it has now started moving, I think, thanks to COVID as well. We have seen a couple of DMAT accounts opening up uh, last year, but uh, it has now started moving uh, towards the larger consumer base. Uh, people at young age are starting to pick up, right? So uh, in your perspective, uh, how are you at Bullsmart or in general, what's your perspective about uh, you know, how has gamification helped solve this problem about awareness? And uh, since at Bullsmart, you are currently solving for awareness as well. So uh, your take on that. Yeah. Thank you so much, Sagarika. So at Bullsmart, we believe in three C's. The first one is continuing education. Second one is companionship. And third one is community. And that what we believe for. So continuing education why because if we want to get more and more you know younger generation if we want younger generation to invest with us not only just because we as a company want to earn profits or as a company we want to earn fees or commissions whatever we charge for no because we want that you know if a huge population especially the youngsters if they'll get the proper education about stocks market or investment or how to save their money how they'll get the return in future those things can also help them to you know uh, just complete their short-term goals like traveling or education or you know like uh, buying some phone anything it can be right so first focus should be continuing with the awareness program, continuing with the education from the very beginning stage, especially from the school. I will not prefer that only colleges should be covered or universities should be covered. It should be covered from the very basic. So uh, I would just like to cite an example over here. Like recently I have been to an orphanage especially which was meant for disabled people. I mean, especially disabled kids. And I was amazed to see, you know, like how they were, you know, they have built their own community and they were exchanging the news for financials and they are just three to four years. So, I mean, I got to, I mean, I thought that, yes, I have to do this. We have to come up with a platform where we can build the proper community for the retail investors where, you know, they can just exchange their thoughts as a friends. Okay? They should be at their bad time. They should be at their good time. They should be with the, uh, at the, when the beer market is going up, when the, uh, sorry, when the bull market is going up and when the beer market is going down. So that kind of thing we have to build up, wherein, you know, we have to support the retail investor in such a way that a proper community should be made. So here the gamification comes, right? Because whenever we see some challenges coming up or when something is very complex, we'll restrict ourselves for that. Like, will think yaar kyu karna ya mere se nahi hoga aaj mere paas paisa nahi hai aaj main nahi kar sakti main koi investment market ke bare mein kuch bhi nahi pata i'm just a kid or i'm just a student i don't know anything 
Indian community is based like that. Whenever it's been talked about money or finances, kids are kept away from that, right? So that thing, first of all, we have to remove all those barriers, entry barriers towards the investment or securities or wealth market. Then only we can grow. We have to think about the people and how it can be done. We have to make it very easy. We have to make such user interfaces where people will enjoy doing investment. But yes, uh, as Karan also said, that we have to keep in mind about the boundaries, so for which we'll talk about it later. Thank you so much, Agri. Thanks. Uh, we I'm over to you. So um, I think uh, you have been into the uh, US investment space. And uh, in my own trading experience, uh, what I have noticed in general parlance is that uh, people move to US markets as a in a long term in their journey, right? It's the first step is always do the domestic markets. They try to explore things there. Only if they're comfortable with the domestic investments is when they move to maybe uh, go explore equity options in uh, US market, right? So um, since you are building a direct-to-customer product on the US markets, uh, how have you maybe used uh, certain aspects of gamification to make that journey easier uh, so that it comes at an ease that you can directly step on and move to uh, US markets simultaneously while you're doing the domestic markets, right? Uh, so your thoughts on that? Yeah, 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 thanks. Uh, so it's, I mean, we might have done some things unknowingly, actually. I, is now when I look back at it, huh, that, this seems more gamified, is what I realized when I was thinking about, you know, what have we done? Uh, but you're absolutely right, right? So for our customer, our customer is a uh, sort of a financially educated customer who basically would have started their journey from fixed deposits, went to mutual funds, did, did direct equity in India, and then eventually graduated to the US stocks, right? So uh, th that person can not necessarily, does not necessarily be old uh, as they go through their journey, but uh, it can be a young person who, have sort of, who has sort of upskilled themselves as well, right? So these kind of financially educated people, now what you need to do to them is make them realize that you should be doing this. Like There is a part of your portfolio that should be diversified internationally. So for us, what we realized very quickly was getting people to the first trade, that first aha moment of buying an Apple stock is the most important thing that we need to do. Once they do that, then they keep coming back again and again because they realize, right, these are all companies that are phenomenal. They know about them. Why have they not been doing that till now? So that's been pretty much solely our focus over the last two years where a lot of it actually was infrastructure building. which didn't exist to open... US brokerage accounts instantly to allow people to transfer funds instantly. But there are some things that we have done from a gamification perspective to uh, help people get to that first trade as far as possible. So two examples that, uh, one is a minor one. Uh, so one is, is basically whenever you're transferring funds, you we build this product called Vested Direct, which allows you to load money in your US brokerage account instantly and online. Now, what we've done there is we've enabled live FX rates. So that's a sort of a gamification aspect where, hey, you can keep refreshing and the FX rate will keep moving up. So you're, you're converting your rupee to dollar, right? So you'll keep seeing that price change and that kind of interaction is something that people like. Like it's just, we've seen that people are just refreshing it for the sake of refreshing it, just to see it move up and down and then they can uh, sort of invest. So that's something which is a very small kind of gamification thing. It could have been a fixed rate. We decided to make it uh, uh, sort of real time. The second thing we've done, which is uh, based on what is our primary goal is getting people to invest first is uh, the referral program, right? Now it's become very common, but we've uh, kind of launched a referral program based on points. So the, the, from the goal competition rewards, we've done the rewards bit driving our most important goal, which is new account. So we've done rewards for folks who want to start investing. We started off with a simple kind of, hey, you'll get 10 bucks uh, yourself and your, uh, and your uh, sort of friend will get 10 bucks if they invest. Now we've moved it to a new sort of points system where uh, you can not only earn when your when your whoever you've referred uh, funds their account, but if they refer somebody and they also so it's sort of a multi-level scheme, but not not a Ponzi multi-level scheme. It's a legit multi-level scheme where you can earn more points, right? So there is a, a larger element of of rewards in this entire picture. And I think lastly, what we've done not not this is not towards our primary goal, which is getting somebody to start investing. This is more for people who are already investing in the US markets. The problem there is once you start, you don't know enough companies because when I mean, you're not hearing from your relatives daily, yeah, 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 stock, yeah, stock, so 
discovery of new companies is something that was a, a problem that we saw in our customer base. And so there we used the competition element of it. So what we did was uh, we launched a competition. We did it for the first time recently. Uh, it was called a sort of a DIY West competition where you create your own portfolio and enter it into the competition and you will be competing against others based on returns uh, that you see on a weekly basis. And, uh, and then there's a grand prize sort of for whoever is the monthly champion. And, and so that was again something that actually when we talk to our users, help them in awareness. Ki, oh, this company is also there. This is there in the leaderboard. This guy has added it to his portfolio. So I should look at it. And so we had almost about 1,300, 1,400 folks in the first edition participate and submit their portfolios. And we saw that these people were much more engaged, almost 40% more engaged than somebody who didn't participate. So competition in itself can help drive engagement was our conclusion. And this was an experiment which worked out. So we'll do more of these going forward. That's very interesting. Thanks. Uh, Zaman, so I think um, when we talk about Squirrel, for me, the first thing that pops up is the chitta saving aspect of it. And you were one of the first movers there, right? And uh, that concept in India has specifically picked up quite a lot because Indians are uh, very much into savings, right? And they would like to save each penny that they get, right? And um, with, with the whole uh, now UPI thing that you can auto-invest and stuff like that, uh, how do you think uh, is, the, is that part going to move? And also, if you can touch a little bit about, uh, upon the mutual funds aspect of it, uh, since Squirrel is focused on mutual funds, so yeah. Thanks. So I think, uh, uh, and this will be interesting for the audience as well, because uh, Viram is obviously coming from a different side, right? He's looked at the, uh, like I was having a chat with him, his average customer ticket size is far, far greater than uh, what our average ticket size is. Uh, and he's looking at people who are, uh, you know, who understand at least some part of financial investments, have some investments, could have invested in a stock or, a, or an FD or an SIP, and now are going actually looking at cross-border, right? Whereas on the other side, we are trying to look at people who are just starting out. And our fundamental assumption is that they don't know anything about investing. And I think for us, it is not just about investing, it is also about saving. I think that is the first step that you need to start with straight away before going to investing. So we have multiple products on our uh, platform and obviously uh, uh, she mentioned about uh, Squirrel Away, which is the roundup feature. That is more from a building a automated savings habit. Now, we did a lot of consumer research, especially amongst the young Indians. And I must say that in a lot of forums and publications, they are talked about saying, oh, they are irresponsible with money and so on and so forth. I actually beg to differ. Uh, to me, uh, the young Indians is probably one of the smartest race. I actually call them a different species. Uh, I think they are very, very smart. They have a very good idea of what they want to accomplish. It may be at variance with what people like me or my parents or you know the older generation may have wanted or maybe wanting them to do. Uh, but for them, uh, finance, the moment you start talking about it, it is boring, jargonized, they lose interest. You start talking about shopping, that's much more fun. And the simple fundamental learning that we got from that is, they feel all this does not add value to their life. They feel, I mean, my last stint was with a bank, a retail bank in India, and they hardly contribute any footfall to any branches. They feel bank is boring, it does not add any value. Investing is, is also stocks, it's speculative. Uh, only the brokers make money and, and it's not about them. Obviously, last couple of years, th uh, the, uh, lots has changed. But I'm just talking about a generic assumption. And therefore, it is very important to actually bring them into the fold and take baby steps, right? And when I was studying one of the biggest successful products in India, an alien product category that was introduced to Indians was shampoo. And the way they did it is we were all used to taking soap bars to wash our face. And the shampoos actually came and they started with a sachet, a one rupee sachet to say, why don't, it's a trial plaque, try it out. If you don't like it, if you like it for 20, 30 days, then invest in a bottle, right? That's another matter, Indians being Indians would use the sachet for four days will make a sachet last for a week. But coming back, I think Squirrel Away does that exactly. It is about building the trust with the user and taking it down to that unit economic of one rupee. Saying you can use, uh, there is an anti-thesis here, right? What will your parents tell you? Don't spend money. 
what we are trying to say is the more you spend, the more you save. Because every time you spend now, there is a positive connotation. The loose change is going to get saved away, stashed away, down to one rupee, right? So that is the whole power of Squirrel Away. And to take those baby steps and get them into fold, earn their trust, earn the badge to say, okay, these guys have helped me do this. Now what more can I do? Next step is then goals. Now, what I feel is that in financial services, product selling is passe. Uh, for this consumer audience, the, you have to actually add value. So they don't really care what the product is, especially in mutual fund industry. This is a large cap, mid cap, this, that, and the other. They are saying, boss, I to vacation, pe jana hai, tum mujhe batao, uske liye kaise help kar sakte ho? And I think that is where we change the conversation by starting to talk about the product. Rather, let's keep the customer in the middle. We talked about that whole gamified approach. What is important for you? How can we help you get there? And in that journey, then we've built the sachets to say there is an adventurous way to get there, there is a practical way to get there. The remote control always has to be in the hand of consumers. You cannot talk down to them saying, I'm saying do It doesn't work. For this generation, the next generation, they want to be in control of whatever is happening. So I think those are the things that we are trying to implement. Of course, it's a long journey. Uh, you need to keep your eye, uh, ears close to the ground, need to keep speaking to them. Uh, and there are those nudges that you can build that Viram was also talking about saying, okay, for this goal, for this duration goal, this is the most popular sachet that is being bought by everyone. Because this is a world of not advertising, but I would say influencing. So it's very important that you bring out the right metrics to speak to them, to engage with them. And I think those are the learnings that uh, 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 that you get from the consumers themselves. It's just that you need to be nimble about then going back and implementing it and fail quickly. I mean, some things don't work. Go back to the drawing board and kind of fix it. Move ahead. I think sash sachets help us do that very well, <laughs> right? Uh, but thanks. I think uh, the way you explained uh, it, it kind of just hit me that how how important gamification is in the journey of investing, right? Uh, Karan, uh, coming to you, I think uh, you are into the alternative asset classes, and uh, it's not regular or it's not popular in India yet, right? So uh, especially when it comes to startup, uh, uh, the word around is that it's a very very risky investment and which it is so how how are you kind of dealing with the whole consumer onboarding when it comes because i think you have to throw in a lot of rules and tools how to use about uh, your platform so how are you going about it and kind of uh, gamifying the whole journey of onboarding thanks thanks Avika. that's actually a very interesting question so uh, one of i think one of our main responsibilities uh, when it comes to making people give access to invest in companies which are fairly young is giving fair disclosures, right? That's how we started off, by disclosing to people that uh, this may not be the right place to put in your entire savings. Uh, but as we as we moved on, we've realized that people also want you to, also want them to guide you uh, or nudge you in a way where uh, they're getting some understanding of, uh, okay, you know what, if I have the ability of putting in one lakh rupees in a year in risky assets, how should I go about it? So one of the recent things we've launched is this feature called Tyke Expert. Now Tyke Expert is our way of nudging and guiding the user by helping him set up a prominent strategy to invest in companies uh, which are live on the platform. Uh, one of the rules that we share over there is the 10-10 rule. A 10-10 rule is basically that you must invest only 10% of your disposable income in 10 different uh, companies to be able to have a diversified portfolio. Uh, additionally, I also think uh, the ability uh, for getting these users to continue investing is also by helping them understand that they can actually invest in products of companies that they personally use. Uh, these days, uh, all of us are using products of early stage startups. And these products are actually what makes them try the particular uh, company out. So we've seen multiple use cases where companies are actually setting up strategies in that manner, where they're actually inviting their own communities, their own user base, uh, to, back to, 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 uh, to back their community round. And uh, that's 
increased attention, that's increased uh, the ability of referring new users to the platform and also a win-win as I mentioned earlier in the, game, in the gamification aspect that if I am able to get my friends to use his product, which is a good product, I win and so does the company win. So I think uh, that's our way of gamifying which is nudging you towards getting access to right opportunities in the right way and at the same time allowing you to uh, help the company grow while you're investing in investment grows. That's our thesis. I think one of the things that you mentioned communities is something that again takes me back to childhood. Like I remember how how loyal I was to my Counter Strike clan or, or World of Warcraft clan, right? So uh, that's something that in, in investing also can be applicable, but I don't think it's been at least on a large scale done well yet in, in India. And so there's a massive opportunity there where I think multiple folks are trying to solve. Uh, we'll see how it goes. I think there are a couple of telegram groups at max, but we've not, moved, yeah. Yeah, we've not moved ahead of that. I think we've got uh, lots to learn. So I have two boys and they are massively into gaming from Minecraft and Roblox. I oh, think yeah. you, if you watch these uh, two platforms, the way they have uh, changed the whole gaming community and the gaming as a uh, uh, I would say uh, the game itself, it is much more social now, right? Yeah. And it is no longer about that Mario Brothers that I used to play. <laughs> it's about, uh, uh, you know, what is being co-created mm. and uh, played together, the competition bit that he talked about, Viram yeah. talked about. I think those are very, very fascinating subjects and they have very deep applications for all of us in financial services. Yeah, makes sense. So I think um, since we have very diversified uh, backgrounds, every one of y'all, um, what I have done is maybe I have uh, four different points in gamification, uh, which I'm going to mention. And what maybe we can do is uh, you can pick one or two on uh, depending on in, in your journey what's the most important aspect right so the first one is discovery itself where the user is just coming to know about your company or what you do right uh, or in general if we just refer to the gamification aspect it's the first step is discovery step right uh, the second one is the onboarding wherein uh, I, the question that I ask Karan uh, comes into play on how smooth is the onboarding journey on how clearly maybe you're putting in the important uh, intrinsic aspect about uh, what's coming their way uh, in their journey. Uh, the third one is scaffolding, which is uh, largely repeated steps, uh, if we can say that, uh, you know, just to get, just to clear the level, you have to certainly make some moves that are repeated in manner. And the fourth one is uh, end game, uh, which is essentially the user attention that they come and you know play games again and again. So maybe uh, uh, from these four aspects, uh, what is the most important aspect, Ankita, to to start with you? Um, when, when it comes to awareness or the the sector that you're dealing with, which is maybe going to turn take a turn into a proper trading company, right? Uh, what is the most important aspect uh, out of these four for you, for your users? Okay. So let me just simplify it. I believe that for gamification, there are three factors, okay? One is progression, second is competition, and third is community, okay? So when, you know, uh, I'm just talking about the journey, okay, like Everybody has their life journeys, everybody has their financial journey, everybody has their personal journey, okay? So we go step by step, okay? If we complete the first level, then only we can go to second level, then third level, then fourth level, right? So for me, the most important thing is that, you know, uh, to simplify the things, to get the connection strong, okay? If you are my friend, I would believe you, okay, you are telling, you know, we are giving rewards, we are, uh, you know, like leaderboards are also there, right? And sometimes we feel insecure also when we are in college, we feel insecure. Okay, this girl, Sagarika, knows so much about, you know, stocks, I don't know anything. But yes, then you start, you know, learning from your friends, okay? This, is, uh, this platform is coming up. So, Bullsmart is also... It is about that. It's basically a fintech and investment platform wherein 
you know the community based ai would be interactive ai where you know investors can correlate within themselves they can discuss the things okay they can just educate the uh, among themselves so that is what the main important part is about bullsman thanks gita viram over to you Okay. Do you want me to repeat the four points if it got? I'll try. I'll try. <laughs> Let me try and remember. <laughs> uh, so I mean, I think I would pick two, and and I mean, as a startup, you you have limited resources, so so probably one or two that you can pick, right? And uh, one that I would focus on is the onboarding bit, because one learning that we've had in our uh, last two three years is kind of the first thirty seconds or the first. 30 minutes of how a customer interacts with your platform is the most important like that will determine everything else beyond that right so if you are able to keep their attention for that much period of time in a in a i mean if you gamify it and it helps you and and things like that like you show progress bars all of those things right then that will reap rewards across the entire journey right so so your entire funnel becomes better so that's that's one and i think then later on the uh, the last one i would pick retention right because uh, you can do so many things then once you have a pool of customers you can make them compete against each other you can sort of show what others are doing you can uh, i mean use all of that social proofing to to drive certain behaviors right and now where do you draw, draw the boundaries there is the question but if the end goal you have is clear in your mind which is i am going to help sort of it kind of like network effect right more people coming on my platform i'm going to help them help others and if you use gamification from that perspective i think overall that that retention of the platform increases and so that's i think two two areas where we'd want to invest um. yeah. massive advantages of sitting after viram because uh, uh, you know uh, we obviously because i mess it up and then you can edit <laughs> i think he articulates very well but i think uh, 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 i'll start with the first one discovery uh, from the perspective that i came on earlier i think we are talking about a country of 130 crore people where only 4 crore pan cards exist and uh, everything that the entire industry and all in this geo world center the financial services is doing is a subset of that 4 crore people right so i think the larger problem for all, all of us to solve is to first get more people to to start uh, engaging with the industry and their products and services so discovery to my mind is a is is a a billion dollar problem to solve for and therefore uh, cumulatively and individually for all of us a very very important uh, goal post to focus on the second thing you talked about was onboarding uh, and like i said i think uh, 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 onboarding is something that you can do only Uh, marginally improve the law of the land is law of the land for everyone kyc has to be done and there are certain things that have to be done as a part of process i can polish it up i can kind of make it a little slick but fact of the matter is i can't avoid it so to that extent i would say that is a given and uh, i would also say that uh, past few years things are improving definitely uh, so that's uh, something uh, that has to happen at a regulator and an ecosystem level so i would just leave it at that I think uh, the second important thing for us, therefore, becomes retention. Now, why that becomes important is also uh, the context is important. We are not in ed tech, food tech. When I when I meet other founders and businesses, forty percent, fifty percent, eighty percent margins are something that is par for the course for a lot of industries. We are a basis points game, and therefore, when you look at a basis point game business, the only way you can make money is at scale. and at the end of the day when you go to marketplace to acquire customers unfortunately or fortunately you are fighting with the same guys for the eyeballs so you are fighting with an amazon we are fighting with the ecom guys zomato guys to acquire the same customer let's say on a google app store so your cacs are not not necessarily very different and therefore uh, in the uh, the second most important therefore it becomes the retention that all the hard work that you have done of getting a customer to get up in the morning and say i want to save money today and then within the save money i don't want to buy crypto i don't want to buy anything else i want to let's say invest uh, in a mutual fund or i want to invest money somewhere and then the third decision to say okay amongst hundreds of options i will let's say come to squirrel uh, after you've crossed all those hoops and he's come into your fold uh, therefore it is very very important that you work hard to make sure that that customer is well looked after 
and uh, uh, you know is felt welcomed and uh, comfortable uh, for as long as possible so i would say that uh, 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 from our standpoint uh, the discovery part and the retention part are the true north stars uh, uh, north star is a wrong thing because there are actually two of them in our case but those are the two most important goal posts to look out for thanks so much karan uh, coming to you, i think on boarding aspect we already spoke about but anything else that uh, you would want to talk about no definitely i'd also like to talk about discovery like sir said uh, uh, we're competing in a huge ocean of digital marketing spend with people uh, of larger muscle compared to all of us here uh, so it becomes very difficult to get people to be interested in something different right so uh, definitely getting even uh, and our target audience is actually much smaller because very few people are even i even understand alternate investments right mm -hmm. so what we do is we actually try something different we uh, ask our companies to throw in a notification on their website or on their application uh, telling their users that hey you know what we're doing a community round and because you believed in us from day one why don't you check it out now uh, a company that is selling uh, supplements or a company that is selling insurance is suddenly sending you a notification or an email saying that hey you know what back us in our next round and uh, that really helped us uh, with discovery that really helped a lot of people come on board a lot of credible people come on board and convert faster so i think discovery again uh, was a form of gamification for us where we actually told the end user uh, which is basically technically if you link it to the stock market it's reliance telling everybody saying hey you know what come back us on the next fpo right so uh, that sort of really worked out well for us additionally i think what i would also like to talk about is retention which is again where the community comes in the community actually is helping other companies that they personally have backed by buying their products uh, in their community rounds so that really helped us to retention so so our job as tai was to get as many widely known private startups uh, on our platform and that really helped us get a good number of users on board but i think uh, for us uh, like so said it's exactly the same thing for us retention and onboarding uh, are more importantly the most important things to solve for uh, other things i think do fall in place thanks karan so i think uh, coming to the last part of the topic which is where to draw a line right and for me uh, to, just to put a perspective when it, um, when it comes to investing i think the line is uh, the thin line of difference between a gamification technique turning into a recommendation right and uh, how in your perspective can we avoid uh, anything that maybe turns too much into recommendation to completely change the user behavior and make them do completely something that they would not have done otherwise ankita starting with oh, you uh in this generation with a millennial and gen z generation i mean people get easily influenced or distracted right we have seen in the past like you know when they get addicted i mean you have seen in the case of robin hood because of you know uh, that one young boy committed suicide right so that thing we have to keep in mind that whatever it is it shouldn't be that much addictive yes we have to gamify the things we have to you know make it easier for the uh, complete crowd but we at that point of time we have to also see that platform is sustainable and the business should not only think about their you know short term goal they have to think about the long term goal and the long term would be if you focus on the awareness it will if you would be focusing on making the things easy and efficient for the users right so uh, for me i think uh, uh, the drawing the line would be to make a platform very much sustainable otherwise it would be game over thanks ankita yeah I, you know there's a, a fundamental issue with uh, with investing platforms is that you make money off of something that might if you incentivize more might not necessarily be the best for the user right so 
if you're making money off of trading and naturally you as a as a uh, as a product manager or as a founder you don't want people to trade that much but then your revenue model is driven by that and so then eventually you're going to be measured in terms of if you're raising money or things like that you're going to be measured in terms of okay what's the trading volume so then you're going to be like okay how do i incentivize trading volume and then you end up putting in gamification techniques to make people trade more which is the big issue right and which is what uh, kind of has happened across uh, companies and so i think a recommendation is a part of it right you you give them a recommendation so they know what to buy and then they again can invest more in things like that so i mean, in the end i think in, is it, this is such a weird thing where your incentives are not aligned as a as a company and so either you don't take money externally which pushes you towards increasing revenue which i think uh, dhirudha has done really well uh, or as a founder you have to be very very clear that you know i'm not going to push the ro- wrong things for my customers i'm not i mean it's tough though if especially when you're facing a lot of heat it's tough to take that decision that i don't want to in- push sort of a behavior that's going to be wrong for my customer but then you have to draw a line somewhere saying that okay this is not right uh, long term it will benefit me right now i don't want to push it forward makes sense so i think uh, just try to avoid as much as uh, more often trading behavior uh, if that's not something that your customer often does you should not maybe nudge that behavior is to conclude correct yeah 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 exactly but it's very difficult to do because your revenue is going to come from that <laughs> how do you do it <laughs> yeah uh is someone th- uh, coming to you i think uh yeah. so i think uh, the hardest thing that i've learned in life is to maintain balance i think it is very easy to take a extremist stand on anything i think the hardest thing is to keep the balance right and i think i would go back to that same statement when we were talking about gamification to ensure that you don't go overboard with gamification i think the biggest risk that you run is that uh, you may actually lose the seriousness itself of what you're doing in the eyes of the consumer if it is too gamified the customer may actually find it very flimsy so i think that that is one part the second problem that i have is and i want to go back to the point that i think An- ankita alluded to unfortunately uh, in our country uh, financial awareness is a pittance right we are all so busy making our kids learn physics chemistry maths and make more money uh, but they don't know what to do with that money once they've made it right and i think uh, that literacy is a is a big issue around here so let me ask a question how many of you believe just a show of hands uh, or have heard of this statement or agree with it high risk is equal to high return 30 40 50 percent of the hall fees right right by that logic right if i keep increasing the risk infinite risk should be infinite return right so actually it doesn't work higher risk actually equals to lower returns and there is this whole thing about the line between speculation and investment has got completely dimmed out blurred out uh, especially in the context of what's happening in the last 2 years right so when sagurika says that i started trading so my red lights kind of go up right that actually do people really understand the difference between trading and investing the speculation and investment part and i'm not saying anything to you please continue to do that sure <laughs> but but i think that is where the line has to be uh, drawn from a gamification standpoint as well that you cannot and then last point on the gamification part and i again go back if you are in financial services business and you cannot and you cannot respect and appreciate the compliance part of the business please find something else to do because i think you have to build a deep respect for that before you try and build out that business if you are going to be disrespectful ab- about compliances and regulations uh, i don't think you have a, a a very long story game over like she said even either now or some point in future where you'll be out of money and capital and time and opportunity cost so i think from a gamification standpoint as well just to gamify and add that gimmickiness 
should not come at the cost of regulations and compliance. I think that has to be, I see so many people are in a quick hurry to launch something. And after it has reached a certain milestone is when they're starting to now think about, okay, how do we now start becoming compliant? But I think some of that stuff has to be baked in right from day zero or minus one, to be honest. Uh, so I think that is where I would draw the boundaries uh, as far as this topic is concerned. Thanks, Amant. And I think in India, uh, the whole, se uh, I mean, SEBI has been quite uh, actively doing the compliance check before anyone or any, you know, gets into the game. But uh, Karan, coming to you, uh, where, where do you think we should uh, draw the line? I actually have a different opinion. I think there has to be a way in which you can nudge or guide the user uh, into a certain activity without necessarily telling him what to do, right? So let's 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 take an example of how professionals invest, right? Professionals invest by studying research papers, by studying uh, volatility in the markets, by studying the global markets, right? That's how they invest. Is there a way in which us fintechs can present that data to them in a very simple manner and say, hey, this is what is happening uh, in the world and this is this is the information basis which people are making decisions. Do you think this information allows you to make an informed decision which is entirely yours uh, without any corruption coming from my end or gamification in that sense? Uh, I think that is, I, I, I personally think that is where uh, regulatorily and as a business you're happy, right? That is the right balance. I personally think you need to tell people that this is how experts or wealth managers or uh, top top players invest. This is what they do. This is the information that they have. This is uh, uh, These are the trends that are going on in this space. This is the information I'm providing you for free in a very simple manner. If this information allows you to make a decision, uh, that decision is, should be completely yours. Uh, and I want to be able to reward myself for giving you that data. And not for, and not for tipping you to invest somewhere, right? I think that personally, for me, would be uh, a happy position to be, and a long-term play to be in as well, where you're creating financial awareness uh, directly or indirectly, and at the same time, uh, you're increasing the wallet share of your own uh, user, and you're able to increase uh, trades and volumes as well. So that's my personal take and I think that's my happy flow. That's a very interesting point. I think if we had more time, we would have maybe touched upon data plus gaming aspect. Uh, that looks very interesting. But I think uh, uh, we are short times up. And uh, thank you so much, everyone, for being here. Uh, I hope you learned about uh, gamification aspects. Uh, I see someone has a question. Uh, can we take a question? Uh, is there someone? Hey, hello. Uh, my name is Charvak. Uh, I want uh, Mr. Sikha to like uh, specifically, explicitly answer this particular context of why we as an industry are being like focusing so much. See, we have been discussing a lot on the credit gap that we have. People not being able to access the formal credit that we have. We are not discussing a lot about the um, this investing gap that we have. We like the the topic itself resonates where to draw the boundaries. So gamification, it's uh, it's something. Please correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, investment is a multi-generational business, right? So gamification has to be restricted up to some point where in which we make people understand that uh, you really need to get in touch with the financial markets to, so that uh, we as an economy can leverage that potential as well. But why there hasn't been hype around this particular context? Like, I really want to understand what are your views about it. Thank you. Sorry, uh, uh, I didn't understand your question properly. but. Uh your question is that why aren't we creating the hype? Yes, as compared to the credit hype that we have. Yeah, yeah. so I think uh, clearly we are a, a credit starved, we are a capital starved nation. There is no doubt about it, right? The number of entrepreneurs that you meet uh, and the fact that we have had chit funds and we have had informal credit where people pay 20, 30, 40, 50% interest 
they are not even able to calculate the amount of interest that they are paying on their business and their business is actually able to afford that kind of margin so clearly i think uh, credit is a very large problem to solve but i have heart of hearts i am very happy that you asked this question i believe that all this uh, bnpl buy now pay later actually should be sn you know bl save now and buy later i think this delayed gratification has to be built in, in into our society because then we are also seeing on the other side of the pendulum of what it does 20 years of aggressive credit led behavior on retail what it does to the society in terms of their saving habits and therefore it brings me back to that same point of staying middle of the fa fairway right that balance is very important to say that uh, are we going to be a completely credit led society or are we going to be a completely saving society i am not uh, you know batting for either of those if at the moment because of the alignment of stars credit is starting to do well and we are putting in place all the machinery to for that industry to do well by all means does not mean we need to put brakes on that can we do more on this side as well answer is yes i think sebi has done i would think uh, perfectly uh, well uh, personally i feel that they could do much much more but i think uh, uh, keeping my personal ambitions and ideas aside i think we are on the right path and as an economy we are doing extremely well uh, uh, look at the number of new additions that we have had to capital markets in the last 2 years unfortunately due to covid but uh, fact of the matter is that i'm, I'm assuming those guys are come lot of people will burn their hands but may not go back from the industry will try different approaches and continue to participate so uh, 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 can more be done answer is a big yes Oh, yeah. I'll just add one more point. Uh, fundamentally, also credit is just easier to scale, right? You're giving somebody free money versus investing. You get, you have to put in your hard, man, hard earned money, and then you lose some, and then you're going to drop off. So, I mean, that's that's. So I don't know how you solve that. One it's one so anecdotal story. When I was starting this venture, I went to my CA and I told him that I have to form a company. Form karni hai. He asked me, Samant, what are you planning to do? I said, I'm planning to do this investment business. He says, Why don't you start a lending business? So I said, look, this is what I know. This is my bread and butter. I've done this for 20 years. He says, मेरे ऑफिस के बाहर अगर दो लोग बैठे होंगे, एक मुझे लोन देने आया है और एक इन्वेस्टमेंट्स के लिए लेने आया है, तेरे को क्या लगता है मैं ऑफिस में पहले किसको बुलाऊंगा, right? Very so well put. Very <laughs> well put. Clearly, clearly there is a, the die is rolled against us and in favor of them from that matter. But I just feel that uh, uh, both the uh, I mean both of them have to go hand in hand. So one shouldn't feel let down to that extent. Hi, uh, can you hear me now? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm Deepak. I'm coming from True Balance actually, which is a lending platform actually. So this question is for both of you actually, Vikram and Samad actually. So because Viram, what I Viram and yeah 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 name <laughs> always gets yeah. messed up. Yeah. So <laughs> what I see is from the entire gamification, what you guys are discussing is about the people who are onboarded to investment platform. Okay, but. if you can also think about the gamification part when a normal layman comes into a banking financial sector it doesn't come into a place where the f uh, in like investment or the insurance category which is the last two categories actually of a financial sector but first two categories is the saving account then lending account and after that only the investment comes and goes actually so if at all if you're building a system for the entire generation it it could be really helpful for us to see the gamification should include multiple funnels actually so that you teach them first is the saving account then saving the money then putting that investment the money then creating an insurance upon that so this is my approach what i see as a strength of gamification so if you have any comments it will be really helpful uh, i think uh, very well put uh, the fact of the matter is unfortunately uh, our country has a multi tiered regulatory uh, uh, environment so you know uh, rbi looks at the banking system sebi looks at the capital markets irda looks at the insurance part of the piece so there have been historically Uh, uh everybody is looked at it myopically with blinkers on to say how can i solve i will only do this i will only do this i will only do that and to that extent that is the opportunity for all of us including you to see how we can actually bring all of them to a consumer together right and and there are multiple people who are trying to solve that problem uh, including you guys uh, and uh, uh, all this talk of neo banks to my mind is exactly that 
So I think we're on the right path on that and coming, uh, maybe I don't think you have to wait for a decade. I think next five years will be, will change the character of how uh, consumers buy, sell, engage with financial services and products. Yeah, I mean, I was just going to say exactly that, right? Kind of uh, what we're doing is going deep into the investment domain, but what essentially new banks are looking to do is apply that gamification layer across all your financial life. So uh, it's definitely going to be something that you'll see in the near future. Yeah. And sorry, one word of caution, right? I'm, I'm, uh, please don't read my comment saying that I've written off the existing incumbents. I think the banks are also the smartest guys in the room and the biggest uh, guys with a lot of capital and customers. So they're also coming to the party. They may be coming through a different door, but they are not going to miss this party. They're going to be here. Thanks. I think if we have uh, time for one last question. Actually, we'll have to take both. Yeah, please. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hi, I'm Manpreet. Uh, so uh, you all are founders here from the investing startups, I can say. So my question, my concern is here because I'm a part of that industry also and I'm a, also a trader and an investor in the market from past five to seven years. But what I am seeing right now, what companies or startups are doing, uh, if we go with the, that gamification term, what exactly they are doing, they are kind of, uh, you know, to make it interesting, to uh, keep the interest of the customer. They are now manipulating their interest with that uh, kind of contest you guys have discussed going on within the app and there are some platforms which are uh, providing that simulation thing for trading like paper trading as we say the term but in that they are also providing uh, for the investors like you can invest your real money very small with the 100 rupees only the 10 rupees only but what's your uh, thought on that thing because sebi has their compliances their regulations on that but still those apps are you know kind of influencing uh, the greed of the retail investor so how you guys can you know uh, make i can say put put the stop on those stuff because th that is not kind of investing thing so, Pantit, I'll take that quickly because we're running out of time. Sure, we sure. need to take one more question. So, my answer is very simple, right? The laws of nature will take over, right? If, if I am running a platform and I am trying to make it gimmicky for you and I'm trying to give you rewards for continuing to trade where I make my fee and you don't end up making money, my life or relationship with you is short-lived. You will very soon uh, be out of money and you will definitely uh, not just leave me, you will look at everybody else with suspicion. Mm -hmm. So I think uh, it, this is the law of nature, uh, and this is also the, I would say, uh, part of democracy. I can't say what you are doing is wrong, right? And uh, the consumer is actually going to decide what you are, I'm, if I'm doing wrong or you are doing right, the consumer will reward with their wallet. So uh, I think uh, there will be companies that will come and many will come and many will fail and few will survive. But that's uh, absolutely fine. I, I don't think we need to uh, be judgmental about it today. I think we need to encourage everybody and let the consumer vote with his wallet. Thanks. I think just one last quick question. Thank you so much. Uh, hi, I'm Riddhi from Lakshmi. It's a fintech platform for women and you know like we were discussing a neo banking platform more power to you thank you yes. and like you know you were saying the right journey where you learn get confident save invest then loan collateralize it for better interest rates right now what we faced and we're looking at gamification and like you also said we don't do anything that's not regulated we don't do digital gold we'll say only gold mutual funds or sovereign gold bonds but now there's obviously a lot of players coming in the market and they'll promote digital gold. Now, as per compliance, you cannot give financial benefits for investing. But most of them come and say, you know, here we can get the share of Apple or you can get digital gold. They're not being compliant. We're not sure how. So do you think with gamification and without breaking or, not, or following compliance, there are ways to kind of compete with these other guys who are not following compliance? Uh, my answer is an absolute yes. How long have you been doing this? It's a year, so we okay. are fairly new. So first new. of all, I want to tell you that uh, uh, women are better investors than men. Yeah. I think uh, you guys have a far more stronger emotional quotient when handling money. Uh, uh, we guys end up you know, pressing all kinds of uh, buttons on the app and buying everything. But you guys are definitely better, so uh, 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 a good uh, uh, 
you know, choice of focusing on women. The other part is, I think, uh, if you would continue to do this for 10 years, many will come and go. And I think the intent is to, uh, uh, so, you know, when I, when I look at it the other way, I think getting rich is easy. The hardest part is staying rich. You know, you can make a trade today and make whatever, 50,000 rupees and you will be feeling on top of the world. And just the chat that we were having, uh, uh, that tomorrow you feel you are the, you, you are the, you know, know it all. And the market has a way of teaching you. you. And I think to that extent, the intent has to be uh, uh, survival. And therefore, the focus is on making sure that the business cannot be at risk consumers' money cannot be at risk. Everything else is, uh, and, and it is a daily battle. I'm, I'm saying it very easily. It happens every single day. Sir, competition ne ye launch kar diya, usne ye launch kar diya. So I think that is the distraction and the noise that you need to kind of insulate yourself with. And uh, yeah, I mean, the, uh, the idea is if you, uh, so here is the other thing, right? Uh, uh, discipline eat strategy for breakfast. So if you decide that this is what I'm going to do and this is what I'm going to do, then I don't think there is a reason for you to worry about what somebody else is doing today and tomorrow and day after. Is there time for one last comment? Thank you. So, no time? Yeah, we're already very no late. Time, no so way. We can take that offline though. You can discuss that with her offline. Thank you. Let's have a round of applause for this panel, Thank everyone. You. Thank you so much. And our photographer is missing. Okay.